you can't go in my room. Why not? Whitney said you smelled gas. B because I was just in my room and I didn't even smell any gas in there. Well, I didn't smell any gas when I was in the kitchen either, but I want to check the valves just to be safe. Oh. And they're in your bedroom closet. But I could have been wrong, Louise. Well, Whitney sounded pretty sure that you were right earlier. Yeah, Teresa, what's going on here? Are you, like, hiding a guy in your room or something, huh? Face the music, sister dear. Come on, princess. Drink this. It'll make you feel better. No. Nothing will make me feel better, Timmy. You act like it's the end of the world. So what? You didn't get your powers back on. Halloween. Big deal. There's always next year. <laughs> next year. Too late. Then you'll get them back sooner. Don't you understand, Timmy? Time is our enemy. While I sit around here powerless, Charity's powers grow stronger every day. And it's only a matter of time before she gets her memory back and she comes into her full powers. And here am I, poor Tabitha, having nothing to fight her with. Poor Tabitha? Maybe you're worried about nothing. What are you talking about? Maybe Charity isn't a threat to you. From everything that Timmy's seen, she's totally harmless. No! What is it, Charity? Help! Somebody help! Charity, it's okay. No! You're not in any no! danger. Look at me. Calm down. It's okay. It's okay. It's just another cheap trick to get Miguel's attention. I don't think so, okay? Charity's really terrified. Yeah, right. Charity, what happened? I heard the glass painting. That was my fault. I knocked the table over. I'm so sorry. But, but why did it make you so hysterical? I remembered something from the fire. When, when you were stuck inside? Yeah, and my mom, she was being attacked by, by a dog. Well, she's not. She's our most dreaded enemy. Don't you forget it. That wretched girl is going to be the most powerful antagonist I've ever faced. You mean when she gets the power? Oh, that's right. And we can't let that happen, Timmy. I've got to keep a close watch on Charity. But we're very fortunate to have Kay Bennett as an ally. Kay really hates Charity. Uh, yes, yeah, she does. I think Kay would do anything, even make a pact 
pact with the devil to get rid of charity and have Miguel for herself. Oh, this is awful. We must not win. It's okay. It's all right. Miguel, maybe I can help. Charity, what do you mean your mom was being attacked by a dog? I don't know. It's all really confused. It doesn't really make sense. But I think that my mom was fighting with a dog the night of the fire. Why would she be fighting with a dog? I don't know. I heard another voice, too, but... But mainly, it was just the dog. Did you and your mom have a dog? I don't remember. But I'm sure that I heard a dog. Well, maybe it was a neighbor's pet. No, no. It sounded really close. Almost like it was, it was in the next room. And it was vicious and howling, not like a normal dog. And, and I, I think that my mom was fighting with it. I feel terrible, Miguel. This is all my fault. No, it's not. It is. I'm so clumsy. When you were playing music, trying to help Charity remember, and I have to go knock a table over. I freaked her out. Look, the sound just reminded her of the windows breaking in her house when it was on fire. I mean, it was a really intense fire. I'm really sorry, Miguel. Look, forget about it, Reese. I mean, these memories may be painful now, but maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it means we're getting a step closer to Charity getting her memory back, and, and hopefully she'll remember what we meant to each other. I can't let that happen. What's going on, Chip? Julian... I told you to never creep up on me like that. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to creep up. What has you in a tizzy today? You know I hate being in this room. It brings back bad memories. I told you to forget about that night, damn it, to stop bringing it up. But you're determined to go against everything I say, aren't you? I can't help you. You humiliated me when you sided with the police chief when I told him to fire Luis. Now you're carrying on about this story again. I don't want to hear it. Not ever again. Just drop it. Drop it? How can I forget about a corpse lying under a bloody sheet right here in this room? How can I forget my own hands covered in blood? It's easy. It never happened. It never happened. I remember exactly what happened that night. I know what I saw. And I know what I did. <laughs> Vinny? I mean, that's just so funny, Hank. Hey? Teresa's hiding a guy in a room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I'm hiding Leonardo in a cap. <laughs> Leo. Yeah. Look, did somebody smell gas or not? Yes! No? No. No. But I thought you told me you smelled gas, Teresa. It, it was a gas. <sighs> It was kind of, um, this a sulfur smell coming from Mama's bathroom. Ugh, there must be a problem with the septic tank. The septic tank? Yeah, out in the backyard. You are so lucky not to have to live with a kid's sister. Yeah, I can see that. Um, let's go check the septic tank. I want to check the, uh, bathroom, Mama's bathroom first. Okay. Thank goodness. If Luis would have seen Ethan in my bedroom, he would have killed him. Oh, no. Oh, no, what? Ethan's in my bedroom. Uh, you told him to hide in there. I have pictures of him on my wall, and if he sees him, he'll know I'm in love with him. Oh, no. a secret from me, Teresa, haven't you? You know my secret?
I don't know what to say. How do you explain love? I cut out the pictures because I've always had a dream. Everybody told me that it was crazy, that it would never come true. But some of it has already come true. You're here in my house, right? Well, I'm glad I'm here. Otherwise, I never would have known. Then you're not upset? Upset? Uh, of course not. I'm happy about it. <laughs> you are? Absolutely. I, oh, my. These sketches of yours are amazing. I found them stuck in this magazine. My sketches? Yes, that's the secret you were talking about, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You've been hiding your talent, Teresa. I mean, I knew you were interested in fashion design, but I had no idea you were so good. You really think so? You're very talented, Teresa. <laughs> Someday you'll be famous. <laughs> Teresa, shouldn't we get Ethan out of here before Luis comes back? Well, in a minute. You think I'll be famous? You have the talent. Now all you have to do is the hard work. And you're right, don't let anyone get in your way. Follow your dreams. The coast is clear. Now let's get Ethan out of here now. now. Whitney, we're talking. How long do you think it's going to take Louise to figure out there's nothing wrong with the plumbing? Now come on! Look, uh, I have nothing to hide in here for. I, I want to talk to your brother, Teresa. No, you can't. No, I need to find out what makes him hate my family so much. I mean, this could be just a misunderstanding. No, it's not. You, you have to go. Teresa, these sketches are good. I mean, you should have the opportunity to work with my mother so you can develop your talent. And I'm not going to let your brother's obsession with my family stop you. I'm going to talk to him. Well, there's nothing wrong with the toilet either. It's weird. You know, I'll check the septic tank too, but I have a feeling that it's just fine. Then what do you think Teresa was smelling if it wasn't gas or sulfur? <laughs> Who knows? She can be so scattered sometimes. I think she was deliberately trying to keep you out of her room. I mean, not that she was hiding a boy in there or anything, but you know how teenage girls are when it comes to their sanctuary. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, how do you know? You don't even have a sister. I know what it's like to want some privacy. You should give her her space. I'm not trying to invade her space, Hank. It's just that I can't keep from worrying about her. She lives in this dream world. You know, she wants things that she's going to have to work hard to get. Even then, there's no guarantee she'll get them. So what's wrong with having a dream? Well, nothing for most people. But with Teresa, it could be disastrous. She dreams about this fancy house and servants and country club memberships. Yeah. It'd be so easy for someone like Ethan Crane to take advantage of her. Oh, no. Here we go about the cranes okay, again. Okay, joke all you want. But I know what I'm talking about. Now, Teresa thinks that Ethan Crane is some sort of a uh, prince. She doesn't know that the cranes are a bunch of users. You can't make something go away just because you wanted to, Julian. I remember exactly what happened that night. I know what I saw, and I know what I did. Come on, Sheridan. This farce has gone far enough. Farce? Now, your ridiculous memories of what happened that night. The truth is nothing happened. You did nothing. You fell asleep on the couch. You had a bad dream. End of story. I can't believe I'm hearing this. Father and I heard you screaming. We came running in here. You were screaming some crazy story about a, a, a dead body. But that's all it was. A story. A child's made-up story. I didn't make it up. I did not dream it. Figment of a young girl's imagination. That's all it was. I know what I saw. And I'm not the only one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Listen to me, Sheridan. No one must ever know about what happened, about what you've done. Never. No one. I can't remember who told me to keep it a secret, but I did just that. I kept it a secret and I did not make it up. Well, because you dreamed that some man told you to keep quiet about something. That makes it all real. Please. I didn't dream it. Then don't you think you'd have recognized that man, the man that told you to keep quiet about what happened? I, I've tried to see his face, but I, I can never see who it is. That's because you were dreaming. I'm, I'm sure it was real. Sheridan, 
This all started when Mother died. You were in an emotionally fragile state. I don't want to talk about that. You always felt that Father blamed your birth for our Mother's eventual death. He did blame me. But Mother loved me, and I was the only one in this house that loved her. You were too young to know anything about who loved whom. Mother died when you were an infant. I know that once I was loved in this house. After Mother died, I never felt loved again. I felt nothing. Oh, poor Sheridan. I don't want your sympathy, Julian. I just want to know what happened that night. I've already told you. There was a body under a bloody sheet. I saw it. You stop this, Sheridan. No. And you're out of your mind if you think that you could convince me that that night never happened. I'm not out of my mind, Sheridan, but it's very possible that you are. Tabitha! Timmy thinks you should get a look at this. What is it? It's Charity and those other kids. Charity doesn't look so hot. Maybe she's sick. She looks sick. <laughs> no, that would be too easy. You know what's going on with that girl? Charity, what happened? Oh, she's all right now, Mom. She just remembered something about the fire and it got her really upset. <sighs> Sorry it upset you, sweetie. But if you remembered something, that's a good sign. She kept talking about a dog fighting with her mother. A dog? Yeah, but Cherry doesn't think that she and her mom had a dog. So a strange dog came and attacked my sister? Who knows? You know, I had such a brief connection with Faith on that video hookup. I guess it's possible that they had a dog. I heard it howling. I'm sure I did. And somehow I sensed that it wasn't friendly. It sounded vicious. And then I heard the glass Listen, breaking. Charity, I, I can tell you're really upset right now. Why don't we talk about it later? Or maybe you should go upstairs and rest. Miguel, you want to help me bring her up? Sure, Mrs. Bennett. Come on, Cherry. It's so awesome the way you care about your cousin. The more time I spend with you, Kay, the more I see how terrific you really are. Thanks, Reese. Would you mind going in the living room to look for my sweater? I think I left it there. Sure. <laughs> He even speaks to me for one more minute, I am gonna scream. He really likes you, Kay. He's doing everything that I want Miguel to do. Maybe it's because of the way you kissed him at the Halloween dance. But I thought I was kissing Miguel. <sighs> Why doesn't anything ever work out the way I want it to? I guess things happen the way they're supposed to. Help me think of a plan, Simone. I have to come up with a way to make Miguel mine forever. I have to find out what's going on with Charity. What are you going to do? Where did I put my tarot cards? What do the cards say, Tabitha? Oh. All I'm getting is mixed messages. Oh, if only I had my powers back. Maybe the cards are telling you you don't need to get rid of Cherry. Don't tell me my business. <sighs> For over 300 years, I've known that Charity would be coming. I knew she would be a force of goodness in the world. And I knew that I would be destroyed if she ever came into her full powers. But maybe you're wrong, Tabitha. Grace has got powers too, right? And she's lived next door to you for the past 20 years. And she hasn't done anything against you? I can't just sit here doing nothing. I'm going over to Grace's house. I've got to see what's going on there. Timmy will come too. You know, Timmy, if Charity ever regains her memory, It'll be a disaster for the two of us. Come on. Come on, Tim.
Charity, I know what a terrible experience you've been through, but you're safe now. Nothing's gonna hurt you here. And we're all here to protect you and keep you safe. I hate to be a burden. Oh, you are not a burden. I mean, not to any of us. You know, I almost died in a fire, too. I know what it's like to have strange dreams and terrible thoughts. I didn't remember who I was either, and I was scared and confused. I was very lucky to have Sam there for me. He seems like a really nice man. Oh, he is. You know he wants to take me out to dinner tonight. For no reason, no occasion. Just because he thinks I'm special. I hope I'm that lucky one day. Oh, Charity. You already are. So lucky to have Miguel here for you. Are you sure you left your sweater in the living room, Kay? How's Charity, Miguel? She was really shaken up. I mean, I'm hoping she can rest a while. Forget about how scared she was. I hope she rests enough to get her strength back. I mean, we should give her all the time she needs and lots of space so she'll be strong enough to forget all the terrible things that have happened to her. I don't think that's such a good idea, Kay. I mean, I want Charity to remember. At least remember the good times. I mean, maybe they'll offset her memories of the fire. Sure, yeah, that's a good idea. Well, why don't we make some popcorn and watch a video? A video? Sure. Miguel, remember when you used to come over to my house after the football games and we'd make popcorn and s'mores and we'd drink hot cider with cinnamon? Okay, how can you think about turning this into a party with what your cousin's going through? Now you're trying to convince me that I'm out of my mind? You'll go to any lengths to convince me that that night never happened. Why? Because it never happened. But that's just not true. You know, I'm not the only one who thinks that you have a tenuous hold on reality. Father has expressed concern on numerous occasions. Father. Hmm. I don't believe you. Yes, father is quite concerned. He was sure you were out of your mind when you were raving about a dead body in this room that night. I was afraid you'd spread your wild stories all over Harmony. That's why he sent you away to France. I remember how afraid I was. How confused I was that I had to go away. Well, we all hoped that the French psychiatrists would help you. Apparently they haven't. Oh, I remember them too. They kept trying to tell me that my memory about that night was wrong. That it didn't happen. And they were right. God. It makes me just furious when I think of all those years with all those doctors and you still cling to that ridiculous story of yours. Well, if it's just a story, then why didn't you tell Ethan that there was never a body under a bloody sheet? Because I only found out recently that Ethan even knew your story. We didn't want him to think of his aunt as a raving lunatic. Better to have him think there was a corpse in this room than a crane in the asylum. But don't worry, Teresa. I won't get in a fight with him. He might get into a fight with you. I just want to talk to him to clear up any animosity between us. And you should be able to work for my mother without living in fear that Luis will find out. Ethan... I really appreciate what you're trying to do, but it would be better if you, you just go. <sighs> Teresa knows her brother. She's right. Please, for my mother's sake. <sighs> Teresa's mother would be so upset if Louise found out she's been working for Mrs. Crane. She already feels guilty enough that she's been hiding it from him. All right, I don't want to cause Pilar any trouble. I'll go. But sooner or later, I'm going to confront Louise. Well, there's nothing wrong with the septic tank. What the hell are you doing in my house? I said, what the hell are you doing in my house? I asked you a question, Crane. What are you doing in my home? I came to talk to you. Well, I don't have anything to say to you or anyone else in your family for that matter. That's exactly why I want to talk to you about this irrational hatred you have for my family. My Aunt Sheridan is put through it every day she goes to work at the youth center. Well, that's her problem. No. It's a problem for all of us. You, me, Sheridan, and Teresa. Wait a minute. What's Teresa got to do with any of this? Look, Luis, I, I've been appointed to the police board by my father. So that means you and I are going to be working together. If we stay enemies, 
things are going to get pretty hard for both of our families. So what do you want from me? I just hope that our past animosity will not affect our working relationship. And you're sure that's the only reason why you're here? I am not insane, Julian. You'd like me to think that I am, but I saw what happened. I did not make the events of that night up. You're afraid, aren't you? Me? Afraid of what? Afraid that I'll find out the truth. You started worrying when I told you I was going to get to the truth, didn't you? There is no truth, Sheridan. The family's worried about you. You have to admit you've been behaving in a rather bizarre manner lately. Bizarre? What are you talking about? Well, throwing pies at a police officer on a public street, you don't call that strange at least? Julian, it was Halloween. I told you I thought Luis was someone else. It was a silly mistake. What about fighting with me in front of Chief Bennett? Was that a prank, too? No. I was very serious. You tried to get Luis fired for something he didn't even do. That's what worries me, Sheridan, and Father, too. You told Father? Of course. He'd already heard about your little Halloween prank from his sources, but when he called this morning, I told him about our fight. He was not a happy man. Why did you have to tell him? There's nothing to hide from our father. By the way, he's coming home earlier than planned. He is? Why, because he doesn't trust you to handle me? I'm doing you a favor by... by warning you, Sheridan. If you keep talking about dead bodies in this room, Father's going to lock you up and throw away the key. Oh, you're just trying to frighten me. Do not test Alistair. And don't tell your policeman friend about this. Luis is not my friend. Good, you just keep it that way. Because if you get the police involved... Why are you worried if that night never happened? We don't happened? want people speculating about the family, but if you do anything to cause police involvement, Father will not step in and save you. Not this time. You know, I thought you were just as worried about charity as I am, Kay. Well, of course I am, Miguel. That is why I think that we should all be having a good time. I don't get it. Well, if Charity comes down and she sees us acting all morbid and depressed, then it's just going to make her more depressed. But if she sees us acting all normal and happy, then it'll make her feel better, right? Um, right. Good idea, Kay. I see what you're trying to do, Kay. You're so wonderful for thinking of it. Yeah, I guess I see it, too. Look, I I'm sorry if I doubted you, Kay. You're always thinking about Charity, aren't you? Of course. And I really appreciate it. <laughs> Sorry, Reese. I don't mean to be making a move on your girl. <laughs> Simone, did you trip? Oh, my God. Mrs. Bennett, how's Charity doing? Uh, she fell asleep. I, I hope I didn't push her too hard trying to help her remember what happened. Oh, no, Miguel. But, you know, she's going to need you to be there for her. I mean, just like Sam was there for me when I was going through the same thing, dealing with amnesia. Can you believe this? My own mother is matchmaking Charity and my boyfriend. I think Charity's going to sleep for a while, Miguel. All right. Uh, Kay, your father and I are going out for dinner tonight, but I want you to call me at the Lobster Shack as soon as Charity wakes up, all right? Sure. You stay here and don't get into any trouble. Okie dokie. Tells to me he doesn't want to turn around. Sure, there's no other reason why he came by? My appointment to the police board is the only reason I'm here. I hope we can work together amicably in the future. Well, I could have saved you a trip down the hill. If you'd have talked to Sam Bennett or anyone else, they'd have told you that I keep my personal life separate from my professional life. I'm glad to hear it. I'm looking forward to our first meeting. If you want to discuss something about the police department, you can contact me at the station. 
I only welcome invited guests in my home. Fine, that's clear enough. Do I gotta warn you one more time to stay away from the cranes? No, Louise. Good. Teresa, don't look like it's the end of the world, okay? Louise is only looking out for you the best way he knows how. for not giving me away to Louise. I did it for your mother's sake. Pilar's the last person I want to hurt. I know. Thanks. Louise is a wonderful brother. He's just overly protective. He's a blind spot when it comes to your family. Yeah, I can see that. But, Teresa, one of these days, Luis is going to realize that you and I know each other and that you're working for my mother. No, he can't. Teresa, it's one of those things that come out eventually. I mean... Something like that can't be kept secret. Teresa, you better come inside before the wee sees you. Hello, Kay. Tabitha, what can I do for you? Well, I smelt that popcorn all the way over at my place, and I couldn't stay away. Nobody here. It must have been Jimmy's imagination. Look, everyone, it's Tabitha. Hello. Hi, kids. Hey, why don't I see your cousin Charity? She's upstairs asleep. Oh. Oh, I hope the poor little thing's all right. Charity had a kind of breakdown earlier. She started to remember things. She said she remembered her mother fighting with someone the night of the fire and hearing some vicious dog growling. I'm glad I ran into you. I need some answers. Answers about what? Why does Luis Lopez Fitzgerald hate us? I don't know. You'd have to ask him. The man will hardly say hello to me. I don't think he's going to open up about his reasons. I mean, he's made it very clear from the beginning that he hates our family. I just want to know why. Well, who knows? I assume he's jealous of our wealth and position like a lot of other people. I think there's more to it than that. Well, I certainly can't speak for the fellow. You don't have to. You know, I think you know what it is. You're just not telling me. What you're saying you don't believe me? A few weeks ago, I would have believed anything you said. But now I know how you think. How I think? Yes. That you think money and power give you rights over everyone in this town. And that can explain why someone like Luis hates us. Yeah, but if you're not going to help me find the answers, I'll find them myself. Pray you don't find the answers, Ethan. You may not like them. I'm not crazy. 
I didn't make it up. I can't believe the nerve of that guy. Coming into my home like he was welcome. I think you were a little hard on Ethan. I thought I was pretty cool. I didn't smash in his face, did I? You know, Ethan's not that bad of a guy, okay? He seems okay to me. Yeah. I'm sure Alistair seemed like a good guy, too. And then one day, my father just disappeared. <sighs> Louise, you're being unreasonable. Look, even if Alistair Crane did something wrong, you can't prove it. So why blame Julian and Sheridan and Ethan? Haven't you ever hated someone so much that it was beyond reason? No, I can't say I ever have. Okay, but why blame Ethan? He had nothing to do with your father's disappearance. He was only a kid when it happened. Ethan is a crane. Eventually, he'll grow up just like his father and his grandfather. Now, I can't take the chance that history will repeat itself. And how is history going to repeat itself? Alistair Crane caused my family a lot of pain. Ethan can do the same thing. This time to my sister, Teresa. <laughs> Luis really believes that the Cranes did something to your father? Yeah. But he never told me exactly what makes him think that. He is convinced that the Cranes had something to do with our father's disappearance. I think Luis will hate the Cranes till the day he dies. Well, then I think now was definitely the time for you to give up your fantasy about marrying Ethan Crane. You know what, Whitney? I'll never let Luis's hatred for the Cranes stop me from dreaming. I'm going to be one of the cranes myself someday. Who do you suppose was fighting for Charity's mother? We don't know. But Charity's really upset and scared by the memory. Yeah, she said she heard a really scary voice. But she didn't recognize the voice, right? No, she didn't. Oh, well. I better be off. <laughs> oh, thanks for the popcorn. <laughs> Have a good evening, kids. Bye. Bye. Oh, and uh, don't forget, I'm right next door if you need me.